There is only one learning objective for TR-35. Be able to use conjugates in formal trig proofs. We'll work through three more proofs in this video. Proof cosine theta over 1 minus sine theta equals secant theta plus tangent theta. Let's start with the left-hand side to simplify. 1 plus or minus sine or cosine is a good candidate to multiply by its conjugate. We have 1 minus sine theta in the denominator, so let's multiply by the unit fraction consisting of its conjugate, namely 1 plus sine theta over 1 plus sine theta. I'm adding a little color coding to help you see what's going on. This gives us the difference between two squares, 1 minus sine squared theta, in the denominator when we multiply across. Now we can substitute cosine squared theta for 1 minus sine squared theta by the Pythagorean identity of cosine squared theta. Let's cancel cosine theta from the numerator and denominator. Now we have two terms in the numerator and one in the denominator, so we can split the fraction in two. The left term, 1 over cosine theta, is equivalent to secant, and the right term, sine theta over cosine theta, is equivalent to tangent and secant theta plus tangent theta is the right-hand side, so the proof is complete. Next problem. Prove tangent theta over 1 plus cosine theta equals 1 minus cosine theta over sine theta cosine theta. The right-hand side looks a little more complex, so we'll start with it and try to manipulate it until it equals the left-hand side. Pause if you'd like to try this one on your own. Again, there's a good conjugate candidate with the numerator 1 minus cosine theta. So let's multiply by the unit fraction, 1 plus cosine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. Multiplying across gives us the difference between squares in the numerator, 1 minus cosine squared theta, and we can substitute sine squared theta by the Pythagorean identity. Next, we can cancel sine theta from the numerator and denominator. It's often helpful to keep an eye on the target. In this case, we're trying to reach tan theta over 1 plus cosine theta. So let's factor our fraction into the product of two fractions. Sine theta over cosine theta as one fraction, and 1 over 1 plus cosine theta as the other. Sine over cosine is the definition of tangent, and simplifying the resulting product yields the right-hand side. Here's the last problem. Prove 1 over secant theta minus tangent theta minus 1 over secant theta plus tangent theta equals 2 tangent theta. Well, the left-hand side is clearly more complex, so let's start there and simplify. Both of these fractions have denominators that are good candidates for conjugate multiplication. But let's go step by step. I'll start with the left fraction. The denominator is secant theta minus tangent theta. So we'll multiply it by the unit fraction secant theta plus tangent theta over secant theta plus tangent theta. As we'd intended, this gives us the difference between squares in the denominator, which we'll handle later. We can apply the conjugate treatment to the right fraction now, so we multiply by secant theta minus tangent theta over secant theta minus tangent theta. And here's what we get when we multiply the right terms across. Now we have two fractions with the same denominator, so we can combine their numerators. Be careful, since the second fraction is subtracted, all of its signs flip. So we get secant theta plus tangent theta minus secant theta plus tangent theta. The secants cancel out, and we end up with two times tangent in the numerator after simplifying. The denominator, secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta, is equivalent to 1 by the Pythagorean identity so we can simplify to 2 tangent theta, which is the right-hand side. When constructing trig proofs, or any other proof or convincing argument, the proof is the destination, and the steps along the way is the journey. Your instructor, colleagues, investors, boss, whoever's your audience, will be more interested in the logic behind the journey than in the claim at the end of it. I was good at math in school, and if I can figure out a problem in two steps, why should I document seven steps? Won't my instructor be impressed when she sees how clever I am? No, she wasn't. When you construct a proof, you aren't documenting your thought process. You aren't saying, it took me seven steps to figure out this proof. You're saying, 
Here are seven clearly stated and supported steps to guide any reader through this proof.